Technology is a crucial part of everyday life for everyone, and in today's digital age, the array of IT-related services on offer to schools provides plenty of exciting opportunities for improving educational attainment and administrative efficiency. Whilst these systems bring a number of efficiencies for us all, when things go wrong, it can disrupt services and adversely affect the operation of a school and the security of the sensitive data it holds. Poor cyber hygiene could affect a school's ability to function, its reputation and its legal obligations to keep personal data safe through data regulations. An increasing number of schools are being targeted and impacted by cybersecurity incidents. The most common types of attack are phishing and ransomware, both of which can have a devastating impact if they are successful. If you haven't already been impacted by a cybersecurity incident, you should assume that at some point you or your organisation will be a victim. So you should be prepared to take the necessary steps to limit the impact this would cause and speed up your response. So why would people target your school? Firstly, schools hold a wealth of information, from intellectual property to sensitive data on pupils, parents and staff. While this isn't as valuable as financial information, it opens up the possibility of impersonating someone to mount a phishing attack, as well as selling the data on the dark web. Cybercriminals are also motivated financially. Attackers understand that schools hold information that is important to everyone linked to the organisation, from staff to pupils and to parents, and that the organisation might be prepared to pay a ransom to get their data back. Limited resources. Whilst the school may have a dedicated IT team, cybersecurity is only a small part of their day job, and sometimes the cybersecurity resources are often limited or non existent depending. This can result in the school's systems and services being not adequately protected, leaving them a soft target for cyber attackers. Schools often have legacy systems still in place that can't be replaced due to budget constraints and older equipment or software that runs key school services are more vulnerable to cyber attacks. Sometimes schools are just unlucky, and an attack may take place through automated mechanisms. Cybercriminals use automated systems to search for public-facing weaknesses, and they can affect schools that do not have basic levels of protection in place, such as weak or breached passwords, insufficient malware protection, unpatched systems, or misconfigured systems. So who is behind the cyber attacks? Finding out who is responsible for a cybersecurity incident is a daunting task and often a worthless exercise. However, from a threat intelligence perspective, it is essential to classify behaviours to help understand the dynamics used and their motive. The first group of people may be online criminals or hackers. There are a wide variety of individuals and groups that might wish to target a school looking to trick users to gain access to the school's data or finances. Often, perpetrators send out blanket emails to organisations in the hope that a member of staff clicks on a malicious web link or an attachment as part of an untargeted attack or incident. Schools may also face targeted threats, whereby high-profile individuals who have access to the most data are manipulated into performing actions or divulging confidential information, usually for fraud purposes. This is called social engineering, and often the victim has no idea that is being done to them. Another group behind the cyber attacks may be malicious insiders. Typically motivated by ill intent, a malicious insider can be a user who has legitimate access to your systems and data, but uses that access to destroy or extract data, or simply to sabotage your systems. It could be inquisitive pupils or staff. Some users simply enjoy the challenge of breaching defences, and rather than practising within a controlled lab environment, they use the school systems to put their skills to the test. Finally, it may just be an honest mistake. Sometimes users with the best intentions just make an honest mistake. This can be a member of staff emailing a sensitive document to the wrong person, or someone losing a school phone or laptop. In 2019, the National Cybersecurity Centre carried out a cybersecurity audit of more than 430 schools across the UK. 
The research highlighted some key areas where schools and the education sector could focus on improving their cyber resilience. Almost all of the schools said that losing access to their IT systems would cause considerable disruption, which is understandable considering how dependent schools have become on technology. Of the schools polled, 83% said they had experienced at least one of the types of cybersecurity incidents mentioned in the audit. The most common form of cyber attack suffered being a phishing attack. Given that schools rely heavily on IT both in the classroom and for admin functions, only one third of schools give cybersecurity training to non-IT staff. Users that undertake cybersecurity training play a valuable role in defending the organisation against cyber attacks and incidents. And less than half of schools were confident that they would be adequately prepared in the event of a cyber attack. Organisations that aren't fully prepared for a cyber incident are often hit the hardest and risk losing the most. Let's have a look at some of the more common attacks then. In October 2020, the European Union Agency for Cybersecurity published a report identifying and evaluating the top cyber threats that took place across the EU throughout 2020. The report highlighted that the changes in working patterns caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and the infrastructure to support remote working led to a surge in personalised cyber attacks using more advanced methods and techniques. The threat landscape shows that malware is still standing strong as the number one cyber threat in the EU, with an increase in phishing attacks, identity theft and ransomware. The number of phishing victims in the EU continues to grow with malicious actors luring their victims in with emails that carry malicious file attachments and malicious links that redirect users to phishing sites or malware downloads. Financial reward is still the main motivation behind most cyber attacks and the COVID-19 pandemic acted as a catalyst fueling attacks on homes, businesses, governments and critical infrastructure. Finally, let's take a look at some cybersecurity protections. There are some simple steps that you can take to protect against the most common threats and types of cyber incidents facing schools. And whilst the device that you use is likely to be managed and protected by the IT team, there are some things that you can do to ensure that your devices stay safe and secure. Firstly, don't ignore updates. Software and apps will have flaws, some of which can be exploited, leading to security problems. When flaws are discovered, the manufacturer will resolve them and send the fix out as a patch or part of a software update. Attackers try to take advantage of those flaws when they find out about them and this can sometimes happen before you or your school has had chance to apply the fix. Most software will automatically update without your knowledge, however sometimes you may be prompted to install the update. Use antivirus software. An up-to-date antivirus solution is often your first line of defence and can stop the malware from being downloaded or even prevent it from executing, stopping an attack in its tracks. Most often, the first time you may be aware of anything suspicious happening is when your antivirus software alerts you. Like any software, antivirus relies on receiving new definitions or updates on a regular basis, so that it is aware of the latest threats that could affect your computer. So make sure that your software is up to date and performing a scan on a regular basis. Use strong passwords. Passwords are the key to unlocking access to systems and the data they hold, and there are several ways to make sure that you can prevent cybercriminals from getting hold of this secret information. Passwords should be memorable to you, but hard for someone else to guess, so it is important that you avoid using words in your password that contain information publicly available on the internet or social media. Avoid using terms such as your name, pets' names, the school you work at, or your favourite football team. Weak passwords can be hacked in seconds, and the longer and more complex it is, the stronger it becomes and the harder it becomes to hack. Make sure that you adopt a strong password or passphrase by using a sequence of three random words, and make use of special characters to make it even stronger. Two-factor authentication can be called many things, such as multi-factor authentication or two-step verification, but in principle, they all aim to do the same thing, and aside from a strong password, Two-factor authentication is one of the best security measures you can enable to protect your systems. Phishing defense. Phishing attacks are on the rise, and often one of the easiest ways of gaining access to data. Most people with email accounts will have received some kind of email which appears genuine, but is actually fake. This is phishing. The aim of phishing is to try and trick you into revealing sensitive information, or it might contain a link to a malicious website 
or an attachment that is infected with malware. Some phishing attempts are random, whilst others may be more targeted to you as an individual or to specific organisations like schools. Phishing attempts typically arrive via email, but can also arrive through social media, text message or phone call. Your IT team or IT supplier should have security tools working behind the scenes to help protect your school from phishing. You can also play a massive role by being aware of any emails that are asking you to act urgently, are of poor quality, or are just too good to be true. If in doubt, ask for further guidance or support when something feels suspicious, unexpected, or unusual. Finally, create a positive security culture. People can be one of the most effective resources in preventing incidents or detecting when one has occurred, and could be the difference between a data breach or a near miss. Organisations should ensure that their employees have the right level of information, knowledge and skills they need to support the security of systems they have access to. This video gave a little overview of why cybersecurity matters for your organisation. If you need any support with any of the matters discussed in this video, you can get in touch with Nine by emailing support at nine.com.